In Nigeria, the main opposition candidate, Mohamedou Buhari, won presidential election by 2.57 million votes. The 2015 presidential race was Buhari's fourth attempt since he was ousted from power in 1985. In 2003, Buhari, then with the All Nigeria People's Party, lost to Olusegun Obasanjo in an election. Our guest in our program is Ahmed Masadoua, a London-based political analyst specialized in the Middle East and Africa. Ahmed, welcome to our program. Thank you for having me. Ahmed, please tell us, who is the newly elected president? Well, Mohamedou Buhari is the leader of the opposition party, the APC, the All Progressive Congress. He previously served um, as the head of state of Nigeria in the 1980s. Uh, he was, before that, uh, an army general, a major general mm -hmm. in the yes. Nigerian army. Um, he is from uh, the country's northern regions, yes. from a state called Katsina, and he is from a town called Daura uh, in Katsina. And um, he is mm -hmm. of the ethnic group, the Fulanis. Um, and so he is an experienced army general and someone who has served in Nigeria's army for many years. And mm -hmm. he served momentarily as head of state in the 1980s, as I said, uh, mm -hmm. during the, the military regime, uh, but didn't stay for very long because he was deposed in a coup by Ibrahim Babangida. Mm -hmm. He since run for election, as you mentioned, a number of times and has lost. Um, but this time around, he's headed... Uh, the APC party, he was chosen by the APC party to lead them in the election and has won uh, uh, quite considerably. Mm -hmm. Ahmed, is he popular among Nigerian people? He is, considering the votes that he's managed to amass. Um, Buhari has done something quite unique in this election, and that is to win parts of Nigeria, to win the election in parts of Nigeria um, that had not previously swung in the way of his uh, political uh, party. In the previous election in 2011, the country was very much split in terms of regional, geopolitical regional uh, votes uh, between the north and the south. In this instance, mm -hmm. Mohamedou Buhari won in his traditional stronghold of the northeast and the northwest of the country, but also managed to take the crucial region of the southwest. Uh, where uh, the country's economic capital is Lagos. Mm -hmm. Some analysts said there would be violence during and after elections, but they were peaceful. Is it due to the non-violence pact known as the Abuja Accord signed by candidates Jonathan and Buhari? Yes, partly, but not exclusively. There are a number of factors that contributed to the fact that there was no post-electoral violence. I mm -hmm. think first and foremost was the very swift uh, statement that was made by the president, the current president, President Goodluck Jonathan, in which he claimed or said that he would concede and calling all of his uh, supporters and the PDP party, his party, the ruling party, to accept the results. I think his concession led to uh, really a lot of uh, praise because his supporters obviously uh, did not engage in violence and neither did supporters of the APC after the president conceded. So I think people's expectations that violence would occur uh, were proven wrong, and that is very good news for Nigeria and for the rest of Africa. It shows that the country has uh, grown in terms of political maturity and democratic maturity. Do you think Jonathan didn't do enough to combat Boko Haram? Well, that's an accusation that's been made against him um, uh, throughout the years in his presidency. Uh, mm -hmm. Foreign observers were certainly keen to make that point, and so were uh, members of the political opposition. But if you look in the last six weeks, a lot of strides have been made and a lot of positive things have been done by his government and the army to actually combat Boko Haram. Between February uh, 14th and March 28th, uh, Nigerian, the Nigerian army, alongside its neighbors, uh, Chad, Cameroon, and Niger, have been able to take back key territories in the northeast uh, and take back key towns 
pushing Boko Haram towards the edges, the fringes of that mm-hmm. territory, yeah. and in doing so, have secured key parts of that area so that people could vote. So, in that sense, despite the criticism that have been that has been made towards Jonathan uh, in the early years of his uh, administration, throughout his administration, um, mm-hmm. one could argue that in the final weeks uh, before the election, his government and the Nigerian army, alongside regional allies, were able to make very considerable and impressive progress against Boko Haram. This does not mean that Boko Haram, by any means, is finished. Yeah. As a movement, it needs combating, which will take many years, no doubt. But for now, uh, the army and its allies have been able to take back a substantial amount of the territories that Boko Haram controlled. And I think that should be seen as a success. Well, speaking about uh, Boko Haram, Buhari said he will rapidly give attention to Kurdish violence. Uh, how is he going to fight Boko Haram terrorists? Well, I think it's a holistic approach which is required. One cannot beat Boko Haram simply through um, uh, an ongoing military uh, engagement. Yeah. Uh, it requires uh, a war on corruption because it is corruption that has led to failed institutions in that part of the country. It also takes a fight in terms of ideology, creating a counter-narrative to the jihadist ideology which is attracting so many young people, not only in Nigeria but throughout the world. And I think one of the key things that Buhari has said he would do is reform the army from a structural point of view. And I think by tackling all of these issues all together, you know, expanding socioeconomic opportunities, fighting corruption, reforming the army, uh, but also, as I said, continuing with the the actual military operations that exist at the moment. I think this holistic approach, when done all together, uh, will uh, eventually lead to uh, Boko Haram's demise. Ahmad is Boko Haram terrorist group the only obstacle facing the new president? Far from it, uh, and perhaps that is the most difficult task for uh, Mohamedou Buhari. Uh, he faces the task of very high expectations placed upon him. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of hope surrounding his campaign. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, the challenges he faces include uh, an economy which is suffering as a result of the dip of uh, international oil prices. Nigeria, mm-hmm. uh, like other oil exporting countries, depends on the stability of international oil prices. And the dip has led to an economic slowdown. Um, so he has a serious economic challenge, he has a security challenge, but he also needs to unite Nigerians following what was a very bitterly fought campaign, uh, which led to a lot of political polarization. So his task will be to unite Nigerians, uh, not only on political terms, but on ethnic terms, on tribal terms, on religious terms. So all of these issues um, uh, requ- require his swift action. Does Nigeria need a military leader to address fundamental problems? Well, I think it would be wrong to assume that Muhammadu Buhari is a military leader. Mm -hmm. Uh, He is a former general. He's a retired general. He served as head of state in the 80s, as I said, in a military regime. Uh, But this is no longer the case. And Nigeria's institutions now are democratic. They're pluralistic. And, um, you know, he rose to power not through a military coup or through, but through an election, democratic election, which was hard fought. And, um, you know, he faces now with the PDP in opposition, the ruling, the former ruling party in opposition. He faces strong political adversaries. And so he will not be able to act in the way that was maybe his you know, he will not be able to act in the same way that he did in, in, in the 80s. He will be constrained by a democratic uh, political landscape and a very pluralistic one. Ahmed, uh, how do you see Nigeria in the 2015? Well, I think there are very positive indicators showing that Nigeria has some, some good times ahead uh, despite the challenges. Um, a lot of people uh, said that the country, this would be the year that the country would fall apart. This is the year that Nigeria would descend into chaos. And I think what Nigeria has done in this election is prove everyone wrong. Uh, it's a country where, despite immense challenges and structural obstacles and difficulties, uh, people are still very much attached to the development of their country and to the stability of their country. And I think these elections going as well as they did show that there are enough foundations for the country to move forward. Uh, what is required now, as I said, is swift political action, but also building 
solid institutions which can mm -hmm. limit the challenges that the country faces, such as insecurity, such as corruption and economic underdevelopment. Well, Ahmad Masidwa, London-based political analyst, thank you for being with us. Thank you.